I grew up in the Etna section of Gary. And I may get emotional on you, so <laughs> be prepared for that. But it was an unbelievable community. Um, one of the things that was so special about it was a sense of pride. It was a sense of um, community where you were still neighborly. Folks, um, for lack of better words, they, everybody looked out for everybody. In my particular situation, my mother was a single mother in the late 60s, which was unheard of. And um, so there were a lot of father figures in my life and, and neighbors. And and one of the neat things was, was that's when people would reprimand another child, even though it wasn't theirs. And the parent would defend that. So I had a lot of people watching me and uh, a lot of role models and, and, and mentors, if you may. But the one thing I will always uh, sticks out to me is the, you know, being a blue collar community, Not nobody had a lot. And a lot of folks uh, did what they do, could, could do to survive, to get by day to day. And, but the one thing that always sticks out in my mind was the tidiness of the community. Everybody took pride in their yards and maintaining their homes making sure they were presentable. I know in my particular case, my mom, uh, with my brother and I, raising two boys, the one thing she said, she said, she always said to us, it doesn't take a lot of money to keep your home presentable, and I expect you to do that. And she instilled that in my brother and I, that you take pride in your home and your community and what you represent. And it doesn't take a lot of money, A, for a rake, so go out and clean up your yard. And B, soap and water is cheap, so keep your home and your community and yourself clean. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to mention earlier as well, one of the things that we did then that you don't see in today's society is, you know, mom would send us out when there was a snowstorm or if somebody needed their grass cut, you go down and cut such and such as grass. Or you go down and shovel. Uh, every, and that in those days, everybody was Mr. and Mrs. or Grandma this and Grandpa that. And they were just neighbors, but we, we were, you know, we presented ourselves and talked to them with respect like that. And uh, we would go down and cut the grass, shovel their, their driveways and their sidewalks, but we wouldn't take a penny because we'd be in trouble if we did. So, again, it was a sense of community, and everybody was one for our one common cause, one common goal in the, in the community. Part of being part of a community is reaching out and helping each other and being there for each other. When your neighbor in time of need that barely knows you knocks in the front door and needs uh, a cup of sugar or a gallon of milk. When's the last time somebody did that now? It was not uncommon when I was a young kid where mom would say, go over to Sandy's house and borrow a cup of sugar or go next door to the Henderson's and get a gallon, you know, ask him if I can borrow some milk till morning. People don't do that now. That's what we need to get back to. I mean, we don't coexist with any of our neighbors presently. Uh, we talk to them, we may wave to two or three and that's it. I can't, you know, we're, again, where I grew up, I knew everybody in that community. And there was probably 10,000 people in that section of Gary. Uh, as an example, if, if I was going on a trip back in the day and I was married then, I wouldn't have to worry. I knew my wife or my family was okay. Now, I have, you don't have anybody you can turn to to call if, they're, if you're in time of need and uh, you're out of town, as an example. Who would help her? Because we don't know our neighbors or our community. It's very sterile.